Hey YouTubers, I was out here uh, uploading or downloading a new tune to my 4.8 in my blazer. Um, trying to get a little more familiar with the HP Tuner Pros. Basically, the original alter, the original changes I made to the tune were just small changes that I got from watching a tutorial from Matt Happel, the sloppy mechanic on YouTube, talking about basic changes he does just as bass when he starts the dyno tune stock vehicles. These are some of the areas he, you know, just automatically changes, you know, some of the parameters, speeds up the power enrichment, uh, changes the throttle opening percentages to have a power enrichment come in at a sooner rate than factory which is like 4800 rpms or something crazy like that but the changes i made previously did make a noticeable increase in power although it did have some odd like it 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 clearly made more power starting at about 4,000 RPMs than it made below 4,000. And uh, Richard and I, we joke around saying, that's my VTEC, yo. Like literally you can like, take off this thing, crowd the throttle, and it'll be pulling decent, but as soon as you, right as you approach 4,000 RPMs, you can feel it just pin you back in the seat more it literally feels like a stupid VTEC on a Honda. I don't know, you know. I went through the tune last night, did figure out one of the problems I was having. I thought my old uh, Sun Pro, Sun Pro Super Tech 2 or whatever that thing's called, I thought its uh, circuitry was too slow to keep up with how fast this engine revs. But turns out, the problem I was having was even though I had the rev limiter set at 6,500 RPM, right, is you, I mean, exactly when you hit 6,000 RPMs on that tack, it would act like you hit like a rev limiter or something would happen and you're like, oh, okay, I must, I must have hit the rev limiter, but I wasn't that high in RPM according to my tack. Well, when I went back in this time, I found out I had set the rev limiter at 6500 uh, abuse mode top you know speed is like 256 miles an hour or whatever the maximum uh, allowable figure is the reason it was cutting out at 6000 rpm is because it had a fuel cutoff setting so the fuel cutoff is what i was hitting at 6000 rpm it had a cutoff of 6000 resume rpm 5950 rpm so i fixed that now nobody freak out or anything i actually set the rev limiter and the let's see i think you have to go in and set the rev limiter abuse mode parameter and the fuel cutoff whatever it is you all the parameters that you have to set to allow the engine to freely rev I set the 7,000 RPMs and I'll tell you why. I have uh, on the agenda plans to swap that 224 crane cam into this 4.8, which is going to necessitate revving this 4.8 to around 65. I'm probably going to try to limit it to 6,500, not more than 68 reason being is all the dyno numbers I've seen for people running uh, the 224 crane cam in a 4.8 they were basically peaking power between 62 and 6800 rpm depending on the amount of head flow they had so um, taking that into consideration I'm just trying to get a head start on this tune for the swap to the crane cam Basically, I changed my idle again. Uh, I like the way it idles now. You know, if you hear a lifter knock, then you guys know from previous videos, 
that this thing has some crazy lazy lifters in it that are going to be replaced when I do the cam. But the factory RPM setting on the idle was 575, I believe it was 575 RPM, which I hated because every time you let it go down the idle, it literally sounded like the engine died. So then I had previously raised it to, it was either 650 or 700. I think it was 650 RPM to try to get it to be a little more stable and a little more clutch pedal friendly. You know what I mean? It just, I don't know, made the idle sound a little more steady, less labored, and it was a little bit easier to drive with the, with the five speed. But I recently had realized that if I slightly increase my eye, my curb idle, the lifter knock isn't as loud. So literally just increasing the oil flow in the engine up from, you know, on my SunTac 2, which I don't know how accurate that thing is, at around 900 to 950 RPM, the lifters got quieter. So I decided last night to bump the curb idle up on this new tune to 800. So keep in mind, I went, I'll be going from 650 RPM up to 800 RPM, which, because that tack does register slightly different than the computer, puts me with the red line just below 1,000. Like I would say 900, not more than 950 RPM showing on my little tack and the motor sounds way stronger you know what i mean like it doesn't get any kind of odd uh, jerks and pops and i don't know it just seems happier idling at 800 rpms compared to the 650 and literally 100 times better than the 575 factory setting so um, i did not make any changes to the timing tables uh, their timing tables are very odd. They're different than the Holly EFI setups. And I didn't feel comfortable with not, with not having access to live data, plus possibly uh, dyno power gains or losses to monitor uh, like knock retard and stuff like that. There's no way to really mess with your timing tables without severely taking the chance of damaging your engine so basically I was just trying to focus on changing my uh, idle RPM I changed the uh, or no I left the uh, power enrichment at 50% throttle opening uh, I did change my target wide open throttle fuel uh, ratio uh, back when I did the Sloppy Mechanics online tune, he had me set the wide open throttle, air, target airflow. You in, in the HP tuners, he told you to put in 1.2. Well, when you do the math, that actually changes from a Stoich 14.7, or on the HP tuners, they use 14.68 to 1, is what they refer to Stoich. When you put 1.2 into your uh, command boxes or cells, that's actually commanding a 12.2 air fuel ratio, which is too rich. So I basically adjusted those uh, cells to represent, I think it ended up in 1.175. And you know, so whenever it calculates the uh, air mass and all that junk, it's going to be commanding a 12.5 air fuel ratio at wide open throttle. So basically, hopefully between you know leaning out the commanded wide open throttle air fuel ratio target, raised my idle a little bit, uh, played with a few other parameters, raised my rev limiters. Hopefully, it's going to be running tip top at its you know peak performance without playing with the timing table. So. It's hard to see with the sun, I apologize. I was hoping to be able to show it recording live data, but I don't know if it is or not. You know, I, mean, I know it's recording it, but you can't see it because of the sun on the computer sitting there on the trash can, so. Anyway, 
playing tuner just well, actually I started last night and we drove out to Raytown and borrowed the HP Tuner Pro and uh, I decided I was going to get a head start on the tune for the cam swap because I'd really like to get this thing running as best as it can and get rid of that stupid lifter tick. Um, in my opinion, and I keep in mind I'm not General Motors' grandson or anything, this engine, the bottom end, is, is fine. This thing doesn't burn oil, use oil, it doesn't, uh, it carries excellent oil pressure, but the lifters are junk. So I feel, even though it's a high mileage 4.8 engine, I feel 100% confident that I can go in there, replace the, the lifters, put, it, put the cam in. I will go ahead and check the timing chain. Uh, because it is such a high mileage motor, I may have to pull that stupid uh, oil pump off the front of the crank and change that chain. I'm not sure yet. I'll have to see what it looks like. I can try to get it tuned. They're having a House of Boost Dino Day coming up in September. I'd really like to get this completed just to be able to run, go over there and run it on the dyno and get a representation of what kind of power it's making. You know, I'm, I'm not expecting anything big and I'll probably be the lowest rear wheel horsepower car at the dyno day, but I would just like to know what it makes. So anyway, keep in mind, I'm not getting crazy. I'm not trying to add a bunch of timing to it. I like running on 87 octane gas too much to chance uh, requiring some something more expensive. Sorry about that. I started to laugh. Anyway, hold on just a second and see what else we can talk about. <laughs> 